Today I want to show you five useful tricks on PowerPoint that are relatively unrelated to its primary function as a presentation tool. Before I begin, I want to note that I'm using PowerPoint 2016 on a PC. If you're using a previous version of PowerPoint or using PowerPoint from Mac, then these features may be in a different location or you might have to use uh, different um, keys to perform these actions. So the first thing is that PowerPoint, when you go to insert an online picture, it provides you the option to search Creative Commons only. You can also filter the results in different ways, but this Creative Commons feature is important because it allows for us to find pictures that are free of copyright or restrictions and allows us to respect the rights of authors on the web, which is an important uh, standard in the ISTE standards for educators. When I click on this one, I can also, I always click on the three dots and I visit the website. Um, in this case, I can see here that the primary URL for the website is allwayback.com and then I can take off this, which is the location of the image, and I can visit the primary website. And I can see that this website does provide free images. They all have a white background. And um, so this is indeed a website that is providing copyright free images. So I can click on this, insert, and there I have it. Now, it might be the case that I want to use this image on my website and not just in my presentation. And in that case, I might also want to add some text. So I'm going to copy and paste that text on here. Smile, you've reached the perfect website. And I can group it by selecting both of these items and right clicking. And I can group these two. And I can also right click again. I can save as picture. And I'm going to put this on my desktop. Picture one is fine. And when I go to my desktop, I can see picture one right here. Now, I might want to crop that a little bit and uh, touch it up, change the background color, all that would be fine um, and can be done, but that would be another, uh, another feature that we're not going to discuss today. Now, let's say that I have many, many, many of these. So if I click Control D, I can copy these and now I have lots of slides and they might have different dogs and I want to save all of them at pictures at the same time, I can click on file. And when I save as my presentation, save it here, I can, instead of saving it as a PowerPoint, I can select uh, JPEG and then click save. And it, set, it asks me, prompts me, which slides do you want to export? All slides or just one? If I click just one, it's going to be the one that I had selected, and it will be the whole slide, not just the picture. Or I could say all slides, and it would take all the slides in my presentation and convert them to image format. Okay, so that's a two for one special there. Number four, I want to show you that in perhaps in certain cases, especially if you're uh, using this as a very simple Photoshop tool, you might want to change the size of the slide before you save it as an image. So if you're creating a header or a sidebar, um, and that's simple uh, in format or design, the design tab, you can change slide size. And so I can say custom slide size, and it might be the case that I want a square. And so I would say eight by eight, because we know the width and the height of the square are the same. And I click OK. And I usually um, ensure fit when I do this. And now I have a square for my slide. So that uh, has limited uses, but um, it's a feature that's nice to know about and be aware of. I'm going to go back to widescreen. OK, number three is the audio record feature. And this might be useful for those of you using uh, before you create an audiobook or you're creating a memo. And so you click insert audio 
and record audio. And then you can title it and then click the red button here. And now I'm recording my audio in this screen recording and I'm recording the audio on this record sound. When I click stop, I can play it and listen back to it, click OK, and then it shows up here and I can listen to here. Now, the useful feature about this is again, if I select this and right click, I can save media and I can save it to wherever on my computer, give it a file name, and then I can uh, save it external to the PowerPoint presenta presentation and use it in a project. So uh, a simple tool available again on most of your phones and other devices, but it's also here for your uh, convenience. Uh, the next thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to have to show you a screenshot because um, PowerPoint will not allow me to screen record a screen recording. So uh, I will show you the button up here, insert, and then screen recording. You can see here it's grayed out. Now if I selected that, it would look like this. Make that larger. And it would give me these options up in the top. Uh, I can turn off the audio. I can turn off or on the pointer. I can select the size of the screen or area I want to record and then I can select to start my recording. And that's actually what I'm using here to record this screen recording for all of you. Okay, um, again, here's a screen recording example and if I right click it, I can save media as and I can save that screen recording external to the PowerPoint, upload it to YouTube, uh, send the file to a colleague and I have it be outside of an actual presentation. Last but not least, you may find for certain certain times that, um, oh, let me create a slide here, that a file is just too big. Say you've created a video for EdTPA, it's 10 minutes long, and it's too large to upload to a task stream website. In that case, PowerPoint actually has a compress media feature. So I'm going to bring in a video from my PC. And this video is rather large. If I go here, File, Compress Media, I can select whether I want it to be presentation quality, which would be the highest of these three, internet quality, which would lower it a little bit, and then low quality, which would lower it quite a bit. In that case, probably that's going to be too low, and I'm going to click internet quality because I'm planning to upload it. I can see this is the video. Its initial size was a, um, I'm sorry, this one's the video that I'm working on, um, and its initial size was 239 megabits. Now by going through this action, it's actually compressing all the media in my presentation. So this is a video on the previous slide. That was the screen recording that I was uh, mentioning. And it has taken off 83 megabits, so it's almost reduced it by half. And in this one, it took it from 239 and it reduced it by 196. So this video is now only about 40 megabits. So that's a, a huge reduction and it would allow me then to upload it where I might need to upload it to. Thanks for watching and I hope these tips are uh, useful for you as you continue to integrate technology into your instruction.